What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gotta Watch Them All, Florida, episode 10. I'm one of your hosts, Adam, joined by my two favorite people, Ken and Melissa. Yay. How's it going, Hi, guys? Friend. Adam did the intro! Yay. <laughs> Wait, what's an intro? <laughs> what's <No>. going on? <laughs> Today is Sunday, December 3rd, 2017, is the day we're recording this. We're in December. <laughs> we're in December. <laughs> that means it's, Gen 3. It's, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It is beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and we bought our Christmas tree today mm-hmm. and uh, did that whole spiel. Yeah, we put it up, we decorated, trimmed the tree. We trimmed the tree. We trimmed the we tree trimmed today. the tree. Pine needles everywhere? No. Pine cones? No, we got pine cones in the tree? We, we actually got a super healthy tree. I didn't see one needle on the floor. Like, this thing is, is fresh. Yeah. We'll see so how long it lasts. You're watering that thing like three times a day, right? I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, we just keep it just filled. But our, our house does smell like uh, the Christmas spirit. It's delicious. <laughs> right, now, right now, it's awesome. No, that's awesome. That's my favorite smell. But we are in December, which means that Gen 3 is coming. Deli Yay! Bird is coming. Deli- <laughs> Gen 3 can wait. Deli Bird is coming. <laughs> Deli Bird is coming. What's going on, everyone? Hi. Hey. Well, hey. well ho-ho, you know. He's oh, dude. There. Ho-ho. We talked about this last ho, ho, week. Hold up. Ho, Actually, ho. we barely talked about this last week. When we were, when we were talking last week... We were speculating on what was going to happen because they had just spotted Ho-Oh in Japan on Japanese trackers and test raids. And then they dropped the bomb on us that Ho-Oh is released worldwide as a legendary raid the day after we recorded last week's episode. They sure did. So it's been out for a couple of days. How have you made out? Adam, have you, have you had any luck? I've caught one additional one since the last time we spoke about it. And that was it- that was last... Thursday, uh, we talked. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah. So you, have, so you two? have two? So you have two now? Yes, I have two. Two nice. out of four. See, that's good, though, because I, I always get concerned with you and on the rural side that you're not going to be able to find people to play with, to pull it off. I always get nervous. Yeah, it's know. tough. It, it really is. I was, like, relieved when I heard that you got one. <laughs> I was like, oh, good. No, it was it was just pure luck that I happened to, you know, look at the, the chat and see that everybody was around, and they were like, any other takers? We need, like, one or two more. And I'm like, I'm on my way. Pulled <laughs> off the highway. Let's do this. That's awesome. So ho is going to be here till the 12th, which is next Tuesday. And uh, before we start talking about Ho in depth, because I do want to talk about uh, the best counters and the strategies and the movesets and all that good stuff, I do want to start with a moment of silence for the ho that Melissa and I tried to capture about two hours ago mm. when uh, we had a group and we had people late, <laughs> right? Yeah. And the last person never showed, the last person that we would have needed, we waited till like zero hour. I think there was, it was two minutes um, left on yeah, the raid two minutes and before we seconds. dropped, right? So we had one shot at this thing and we had six people. We go in. About three quarters of the way through, my phone crashes, and the raid well, the raid the, clock had expired, no. so I couldn't come back in. Yes, and then Josh's phone crashes, <laughs> and he couldn't get back in, and then... And Melissa's the, like, am I the only one in here? Yeah, I'm looking, I'm like, what's going on? Because I didn't see anybody else in the room, and we're still doing damage, but lo and behold, time ran out with a sliver a sliver. Rip. Rip. Yeah, see, that I, happened to me. Dude, I was I, so I was so angry. Ken was angry for like an hour. <laughs> I couldn't even talk to him. Like we we came home and he was so grumpy. The salt is I was no, just look. like, "Oh, I'm just going to decorate the tree." No, cuz look, Melissa put her foot down as a mommy and a wife today and was like, "Yo, we need to do family stuff today. Chill on the Pokémon, right?" So I'm like, "All right, but if we happen to see a ho like in our travels, you know, let's do it, right?" So and of course, the, I would not say no to that. So the ho o was literally right down the street, like 50 feet down the street at the gym right here. So while we were home in the midst of the action of the Christmas tree and all that stuff, I'm like, yo, let's go over and just knock this ho o out. I got people in route, right? I set it all up and uh, we just couldn't pull it off. And I, you know, we would have had it if I could have got back in. Yeah. And we were, we were holding out for that one last person and... We had talked about, you know, the different types of characters that you have at every gym. You have the expert, you know, and then you always got that late person. Yeah. Messing it up for everyone. (laughs) But I was so mad because it was the only raid I got a chance to do today and rip. But you know what? I'm also mad at myself because the way that I played the raid when my first set of guys 
got knocked out, I didn't revive them. I just let... Took the next batch. I just took the next batch, and that was a bad, bad, bad move. I should have just... Yeah, it's not took the best mo- decision. I should have just took a moment and... Well, I, I didn't think that anybody was going to flop out like that, so I figured we had it in the bag. <laughs> yeah. I've hoarded my uh, my Max Revives just for like a ki- for this Pokemon specifically because I have... Now I have like 220 of them, and it's like... <sighs> You need wow. them to be able to just jump back in with your team. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've I've always I've never had a problem with revives until just recently, and now it's you know I mean I probably still have seventy or eighty of them, but you know I typically will have one hundred and fifty on my person at all times. But it, it, they've definitely cut down. But we're gonna we're gonna go in depth on Ho Oh. Can I ask one about, question what? about the Ho Oh? What did he have solar? Beam? No, and it was not a solar beam one. So that we had oh. that advantage as well. Yeah, exactly. Because I had brought two golems, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a moment. But the legendary beasts are gone, so no more Suicune and Tay Raikou. They're gone, right? So we don't know when they're going to come back. So I hope everyone had a chance to do enough battling and get them while you could. That was a lot of fun. You know, I remember first hearing that each one was going to be around for a month, and I was like, dude, a month is a long time for each one. Like. Are people going to get burned out? And definitely towards the end of Suicune, people were cooked on legendary raids. Like they were, they were done. Like the numbers were dwindling. And then they announced Toho, and it was just like all of a sudden people are you know doing ten, fifteen raids a day again, you know, and going hardcore. This boss is forty eight thousand two hundred and seventy six CP, so it's a big old bird, big old fire turkey chicken looking thing. And uh, the level twenty max CP. Is uh, two thousand two hundred and twenty two. So twenty two twenty two is what you want to look for for perfect uh, IVs once you get to the capture screen. And this has a two percent base capture rate, so same as the beasts uh, and Lugia. So this one is tough. This one is this one is tough to catch. Uh, and he's super close, dude. It's like an Ursaring. Ursaring is like the uh, the closest I think I can think of of where the circle is, but the circle is almost the entire screen. So you, it is very difficult to judge a curveball. You have to do like this real tight spin and a, you know, real upward throw. Like you can't arc it at all because this, the circle is just so big. But that's kind of cool. I, when I first saw that, I was like, all right, this is, this is cool. You know, this is different. The circle lock trick doesn't really work as good as you would want it to because it's really hard to judge. You know how to. Which how doesn't to throw. matter for me because I don't use that anyway. Which you and I should. Found, we, no, I was try- dude. We try. I tried the other night to show Melissa the Prodigy's Nation trick. And she, she, I mean, I got angry actually. <laughs> I got really annoyed. Can because, you just throw the ball over? There? Yeah, Dude, like, like no, just I'm, let me let me do it because when I was trying to do the circle lock trick, I I can't. I need to go through the whole motion in order to. Melissa to get will the like great spin throw. the ball for thirty seconds. Like uh, 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 just spinning, I have to feel spinning, it. I'm I like, yo, how long are you to spin that thing go. for? Let me let me be. But um, <laughs> I've also noticed that when I only had one chance to actually view. Ho oh on the capture screen and I blew it a bunch of times because when he's doing like his moves he goes up but I didn't realize he was up in the air. So I'm he's throwing so big. Yeah, because he's gigantic. So I'm throwing the ball. I'm like, why am I not even close to him? And then he dropped down and I was like, Oh, yeah. oh. And, No, yeah. he's massive. He's definitely massive. It gives you a complete different feel for throwing, and uh, I'm telling you, if you ever encounter a wild Ursaring, this the circle is like super. That's the closest thing I can think of. Like I said, two percent base capture rate. The thing is hard. Golden Raspberry with a curved ball and an excellent throw is almost a sixteen percent. So I'd imagine that most people um, are going to be shooting for Golden Raz curved ball great throw, which is twelve point seven five percent. So if you have ten balls. You're still running only twelve and you know twelve and a half, twelve and three quarter percent each time. So that's tough. That's a that's a tough catch rate. It but, is. It is. You know, I caught mine on my last on one of my last balls again. That is like, awesome. That's so nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just like, all right, guys, peace out. I'm leaving. <laughs> I got it. I yes. gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. Gotta go. Well, that's how it was too. The the first night when we went, we did the two back to back raids. It's like as soon as we caught it. We had to rush out to get to the second raid, and we literally almost missed it by 30 seconds. Like, well, good thing we left when we did, but... I didn't catch it, the second one. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I totally derped it big time. <laughs> like, I threw... F- I had 12 chances, and I had... I threw four balls just, like... Just... I was so excited, I guess. I just threw them out of nowhere. Well, I've had the, the gimp finger where you just touch the ball, and it just dribbles down, like, drops right in front of you. <laughs> I've done that so many oh. times recently. It's like... 
I don't know if when I do my curveball spin, I'm spinning too wide, too big a circle that I'm kind of pseudo throwing it, and that's why it's just kind of flopping out. But, no, you just goof it off. Oh, man, that's the worst. That's the worst. All right, so the weaknesses of Ho-Oh are just like Moltres. So we got Flying Fire type in Ho-Oh. It's going to have double weakness to rock. So Golem is going to be your best bet. Um, there's It's also weak to electric and water. So this is it has a very interesting counter list here. So based on the move set of Ho-Oh, can really depend on what the best counter is going to be. Now, even though that this is a fire flying Pokemon, it can learn Solar Beam. And if it learns Solar Beam, the norm you want to use rock types for the double weakness that Ho-Oh has, but a rock type is going to have double weakness to grass. So if this thing has Solar Beam, it's going to one-shot your golems to oblivion like immediately <laughs> so yeah golem is like the best thing to use as long as it doesn't have solar beam omastar with legacy moves rock throw and rock slide are what pokemon go hub actually list as the best counter uh they also have water gun hydro pump up there because it is going to be weak to water as well golem with rock throw stone edge is going to be the best for that double weakness uh tyranitar with bite stone edge is going to be good you'll get the double weakness on your stone edge attack but you won't take double damage on the Solar Beam. Zapdos with Charge Beam and Thunderbolt, Vaporeon with Water Gun and Hydro Pump, and Gyarados with Dragon Tail and Hydro Pump. Those are all the best counters for Ho-Oh. I was bringing two Golems, two Raikou, and two Gyarados. That's what I had in my party every time I've gone against them. And the first time it had Solar Beam and my Golems just got totally cooked, and then uh, I was able to last with everybody else. But the one we fought today, I believe was a fire blast so you know the, the dps output of the fire blast is way way lower than the solar beam uh with the type effectiveness so we were able to last a little bit but not long enough to knock the no. thing out because we just didn't have enough people in the mix but this it, it's i think this is such a, a weird raid boss with this move with the moves that they get because it's a beefy pokemon you can you know power this thing up crazily you know i think it goes up to 38 3900 or something like that and it's just bizarre because you cannot get a move set where you're going to have double stab the quick moves are going to be either steel wing or extra sensory so you got a steel move or a psychic move and then the charge charge moves are brave bird which is flying fire blast fire move or solar beam the grass so in best case scenario you're only going to have one charge move that will allow you to have stab so i don't get the move selection here but yeah that's a pretty kooky combination there but i don't see where you would necessarily be using ho-oh as an attacker because there's going to be a better fire pokemon to use in moltres and there's going to be a better flying pokemon to use with dragonite so i don't i don't know where it would fit as an attacker I, you know the only thing you really have to look out for when you're fighting it is going to be that that solar beam and of course you're not going to know until you're in the fight which will probably be too late if you uh bring a whole party of golems mm-hmm. but yep so don't you know that's why you kind of have to have a diverse lineup because you have to prepare for that for that solar beam because if you bring six golems and the thing has solar beam you're going to be going out on the Beach first Street. yeah that was my first it was my first uh raid with uh ho i was just like nope i'm done it might All even right. kill you cool. if you dodge it just from taking like the dodge damage it might still be enough to knock you out you know because you're going to have that double weakness as as a golem but but we have it till the 12th to catch Ho-Oh, we're going to go so out Get out Sunday. there and go. Get out there and go. We, uh, yeah. you know, I told Melissa, I said, we got, we got next Sunday. So I want to go hard next Sunday. Yes. I have one in the deck, so I'm happy about that. Well, that's the, that's the, that good feeling where you're just like, I can breathe. I caught it. I don't have to stress yeah, about, very nice. <laughs> you know, missing it or missing out and having that hole in the Pokedex. Like that's. That just yeah, hurt. Like no that's stress. Painful. No stress. Well, that's what originally had happened to Melissa with Zapdos. She went 0 for 8. And then when they brought Zapdos back, she was able to catch one. Yeah. I was like, yes. Thank God. Good stuff with ho Go out there and get one. Time is... Time is ticking. I'm ticking, telling you, ticking, they're going to bring ticking. Gen 3. They're going let, to... Let's, let's, let's place your bets. Place your bets. Gen 3 is coming on the 12th or the 13th. That's Deli my bird. guess. <laughs> <laughs> Deli, 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 deli. deli. So we had a bunch of cool technical things happen in the back end of the game this week. We had the in-game map was finally updated, and what was really neat about this is they kind of converted from using the infrastructure of Google Maps completely over to OpenStreetMaps. So OpenStreetMaps is a user-sourced 
map system. So it has a much, much better foot path and foot traffic based GPS than Google does, where Google's going to have better, you know, automotive based tracking. So the spawns and the parks and the walking paths and the hiking paths have a much better rate of being covered in OpenStreetMaps than on Google Maps. That's and, cool. And what's really cool is it it provides a significant amount more detail when there's bodies of water. So now, when you look at your map, you're going to be able to see a much more detailed layout of the city blocks, even the houses that are on there, but walking paths and hiking paths and that kind of stuff are going to be plotted out as well. Adam, by you, have you noticed anything different on the map? Yes. So the graveyard that I always talk about, it's usually just like it's a straight shot of a road because that's like the main street. That's always the, what's there. And then the gyms and the stops are just kind of like in the patch of grass. Now there's actual roads into the graveyard. Nice. And then it's like, but they did take away one of the roads that was on the map. And now it's not there, which is kind of weird. <laughs> well, I've like right, that right, right near, right, yeah, right near my house, and it's like I could always count on that one spot, like right after that road where tons of spawns would happen. And just I don't understand why, because it's just somebody's house, but it's just a huge spawn point. And now it's kind of harder. Like I have to like pull over now to like Get see something. those spawns. We we've noticed like main roads will just they'll be like dead zones. Like we're driving down a main street, like a you know very very popular road. And, you know, Melissa looks at me and she goes, there's nothing. It's blank. Like, what the heck? Yeah, it's just grass and on the like, map. And like, there's like literally like but a carved a out square of road, completely blank. And then <clears> off <throat> in the distance, you could see where the road picks up again. So it's really bizarre that we're, I'm seeing these big chunks of map missing. And I don't know wow. if you've noticed, but we, I don't know when this happened, but we noticed that one of our pokey stops around here changed from a puppy stop to a gym yes well we had we had a a gym that was in like a new housing development like their their center fountain you know like this you know fancy pants condo association type thing and that gym completely came off the map and they made the neighboring business which which is a uh, adult store, adult toy store, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah, so fun. there's a Pozo, it's a Pokestop right there. <laughs> which but is where we did our... Which is where we did our first ho over. Yeah. Um, they converted that Pokestop to a gym. So we lost the gym, and then we picked up one right next door. Now, luckily, I had a gold medal, or I had a gold ranking on that, that fountain gym that's not there anymore, because I would have been bitter if I would have been stuck with like a bronze or a silver medal in my in my list and I can never access that gym ever again because it's gone. Yeah. But yeah, we did, I, we did see a little bit of a shakeup with that, but I think it's pretty cool. It, it will be interesting next time you go hiking to see if, you know, the, the more uncharted areas or mountains, you know, or hiking paths have any detail on the map. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. Cause I mean, like I've seen one of my polka stops is like moved a few feet, but no, it's like normal position. But that's it. Like same name though, same name and everything. Yeah, same name, everything. Yeah, so it, it might just, just be aligning the GPS a little bit differently based on you know how it's plotted out in, in OpenStreetMaps. And what's interesting is if you follow Trainer Tips, Trainer Tips has always talked about OpenStreetMaps and how you can go in and actually influence OpenStreetMaps and plot your own thing out, and then ultimately, if more users say the same thing, they'll they'll make it you know into the integrated into the map because that's how it's. The maps are created. It's all open source like that. So people were actually trying to like, you know, create paths around their house. So spawn, so spawn points would be placed <laughs> because the data from a walking path would be plugged in open street map. So people were getting a little weird with it, but it's official now. And there's no mention of Google maps at all in the source code of the game. And it's com been completely replaced with open street maps. So that's pretty neat. Pretty neat that they changed that whole uh, infrastructure. It'll be interesting. We have this huge park very close to us, and it's got a pokey stop right at the entrance of the park. But once you go into the park itself, it's like nothing. Blank. blank. Just a huge open grass field. And it always says there's sightings, but nothing ever it's spawns. It's the worst. It never spawns anything. Because that's where I like take the dog for a walk. 
to like yeah. let, throw, and you take the dog, you know, forever. throw the and ball, to take the dog off the leash. I'm walking for 40 minutes, Nothing. and I'm like, what Nothing. the bananas? <laughs> Nothing. But there's there's a hiking path that goes all through the woods behind it. So if they if they plot that out and it becomes a spawn point, that would be awesome because then we'll have an actual you know a nice little hiking path to to go through in the woods. So it'll make it a little bit more worth it, but. I thought that was pretty neat. So let you know. Let us know if you see any changes on the map. It, definitely, the before and after photos that people have posted are, you know, the maps are significantly more detailed now. So looks good. Looks cool. I like seeing the little like there was a recent construction by our house where they put this like a uh, little man-made runoff or reservoir of water off a shopping center, and that's actually detailed on the map now in blue. Like actual the actual water is there. So it's pretty cool that even something as small as like this little man-made reservoir thingy for you know a, a shopping center runoff is being detailed on the map so that's cool and check out open street maps because you can actually become a, a contributor and ultimately shape pokemon go if you become uh active in the open open street map scene <laughs> Ooh, i'm gonna get on that right now <laughs> but uh pokemon go travel ended the other you know the other day when all our all our goodies ended and all that fun stuff the numbers came out we caught 3.36 billion pokemon in that seven day period. 3.36 billion? So insane That's crazy. numbers, insane numbers. But get these numbers. Check this out. So the, uh, the event kind of concluded with the Safari Zone event that they had in the Totori Sand Dunes in Japan. This was a massive event. I never heard of this place before this event. And it was really cool watching the, the vlogs that Niantic uh, had put out from the behind the scenes of this event because the, the scenery was absolutely amazing. Like, it, it looks like, you know, a Star Wars planet. You wouldn't think it's Japan when you see all this sand. It's totally crazy. But get this. 89,000 people traveled to the, the region for the event. And they're estimating that the tourism generated $16 million in local revenue. That's insane. For that region. Which wow. is insane. So, the I remember when, like, Trainer Tips went out to Japan for the Lapras event. Mm-hmm. And I forget how much that was generated for that, but I don't think it was anywhere near 16 million. This is absolutely awesome. Like this is, it, it shows the the power of people willing to travel for this game. I mean, look at Chicago. Chicago had 20,000 people travel. This is almost 90,000 people out in Japan, like, and spending money, you know? So yeah. they're, they're staying yeah, at hotels. Times, like, like that's nuts. It's so awesome. I, I hope that these safari zones continue and they continue and they bring them over to the states because it's just it's pretty cool seeing the power of the game and how it can influence economies in certain areas and especially in these countries that have been hit by disasters and stuff you know that injecting their local economy with you know sixteen million dollars worth of uh, revenue in a week is you know quite the uh, quite the feat and quite the jump start for for anyone. <laughs> So really cool. Yeah, news. let's let's do something in Maine. That'd Bowling be a lot of fun. Springs. <laughs> That's the only thing I know about Maine is the, it's where <laughs> the lobsters. Spring. Come on, there's lobsters. <laughs> oh yeah, there's lobsters. Fishing. Says the vegetarians. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but um, veggie lobster, no. <laughs> yeah, veggie lobster, soy lobster. So speaking of these different events and that they're having in the states. Uh, they announced this event in Los Angeles. I have no idea how to pronounce this. We're, we were looking for video reference of how to say this word, but it's the Los Angeles Siclavia. 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 I don't know what the heck it's called. Los Angeles Siclavia. We're going to call Soleil. it. Cirque Soleil. Cirque uh, Soleil. This is going to be <laughs> like the Philly Free Streets model applied to an LA street. So they're going to shut down the street. They're going to allow people to bike, skate, walk, do all that stuff. Vendors are going to be out. And they're integrating Pokemon Go into the event. Now, the interesting part is this is not a Knight Foundation event. So the Knight Foundation has held events like Philly Free Streets and also the one in Akron, the one in Charlotte, uh, the one in San Jose. They were all Knight Foundation events. This one, I have not seen Knight Foundation attached to it anywhere. So it's interesting to see if this is going to be a venture that was directly done by Niantic and not their partner that was handling their events. And if that's the case, that's pretty cool because now that's just more things that are coming in-house at Niantic as their team grows. So that'll be interesting to see how the event goes. But they put out a statement saying the same thing as Philly Free Streets. This is a community-based event. 
They're not going to be extra spawns. There's not going to be anything different than what's already in the game. This is a focus on the community. And like we've uh, preached to the choir every week since Philly, and that's all you need. You don't need yeah. extra spawns. Like you don't need anything extra when you when the the event is based on the community and you have a community that will rally together. That's all you need to have. Yeah, exactly. To pretty have much. A pretty good much. You're saying, time. Exactly. That's what you're saying. Oh, Come out yeah. and have a good time with people that love playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, Pokemon Go. That's going to be cool to see coverage from the uh, from the West Coast. I'm sure. Dark Matter Wolf and Elijah Watts and you know the West Coast guys will uh, will be checking that out. So yeah, I can't wait yeah. to see the videos. Yeah, yeah, because if it's anything like Philly Free Streets, they're gonna have a they're gonna have a good time. Well, you know, it'll be time. interesting to see if uh, you know because all those West Coast people came out to Philly Free Streets. It'll be interesting to see if Holly or anyone else goes over to the West Coast for for this event. That is a good question. That's a good question. I think Scott. I mean, I'd go, from but I have Georgia. to work so. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, true story. Yeah, Adam has to work. <laughs> yeah. We all have to work, but Adam, but Adam has to Adam always work. has to work. <laughs> yeah. Open and close. Open and close. Uh, another crazy announcement, and we've talked about Ingress before on the show. I don't know anything really about this game. I I, I did. I took a crash course on YouTube one day about how, how the game mechanics work and everything, and, and I'm still a little naive to it all. But they made a significant announcement about Ingress Prime. This is like Ingress 2.0, and the trailer that they put together for it is pretty intriguing. It's pretty cool. It's like a high high production value, but apparently they're completely revamping Ingress from the ground up, and this is going to be happening uh, next year, I guess. So they're going to have a ridiculously busy year ahead of them with Ingress, this, Ingress Harry Prime, Potter. Harry Potter, Wizards Unite, and then Pokemon Go, you know, still going strong. So, uh, I think they released the numbers that they're now up to 150 employees. Which, if you think when the development of Pokemon Go started, I think they were seven employees. So the team what? has grown a lot, you know, which is really wow. cool. And you know, they're acquiring. You know, what was the last company that they just acquired? Evertune, which was like a social media kind of like uh, they they create avatar based comic strips and stuff like that and do social media integration. So. I wonder if that has anything to do with uh, their their increased presence on social media lately. But you know what? I do want to talk about their their presence on on media. When the Pokemon Go Travel first trailer came out, and Adam, we were talking about this, they kind of made a lot of hype that this was going to be this video series following these YouTubers, you know, tracking their progress and doing all this stuff. And it was going to be this big video series. And what it turned out to be was seven days of 60 second videos they put out seven 60 second videos and it was very underwhelming because yeah, 30, it was all the same girl it, but it was 30 seconds of the 60 seconds was just plugging the event like over and over and then the last 30 seconds was not too informative it was just a quick it's montage. probably because none of them actually play pokemon oh snap you sound like the Ooh. internet oh. no but listen but listen so at the end of the event <laughs> they put out a two minute video and in this one two minute video they probably have more content and explain more and show more than they had in the previous seven minutes of content they re that they released in 60 second increments over the previous seven days in this one two minute video they kind of run through the whole event talk about the prizes talk about that that tourism revenue talk about the 3.36 million catches but it was really cool but there they made it this seem like this was going to be this big vlog and this big internet thing and the big video thing and there was I, nothing. I, I was kind of looking forward to seeing would, videos from other places of people playing in other places and taking AR photos and cool locations that I've never seen before. And right? it was nothing. It was just that that one girl. And it's like they all have their own channels. So is there are they going to be update like well, giving I us something from their channels? Where the other? I followed all of them, and they were they were all somewhat underwhelming with the amount of activity that they were going. I mean, they were posting photos. And you know Instagram pics and stuff like that, but I thought know, there was going to be videos. I I was but, under a now, different impression. But the conversation goes like this: so we're the we're the one percent of this game of this community. You know, we're playing hardcore. We're watching hardcore YouTubers that are going to be analyzing the game in the same way that we would on this podcast. You know, with a fine tooth comb and talk about IVs and strategies. We're the one percent. 
so you're we're, the 1%. We, we, <laughs> we're, expecting, <laughs> we're expecting this highly analytical and trainer tips or reversal style coverage of the game. But I don't, I don't know. Is it just that we're so used to getting this daily content from trainer tips that we're underwhelmed by what no. Niantic is putting out? Well, listen, listen. Even if you're casual, okay? So like the casual, casual player. So we just had the event and we had, you know, times two experience unlocked, like from the get-go pretty much. And they have a video where they're all sitting around playing, like obviously doing a raid. And it's like if there's double experience and you're just leveling up to 25 that's kind of strange because if because if that's like a legendary raid that's forty thousand experience points that's like a, like 25 like i don't know what the math is to for the for your level but that's got to be like that's one raid well you know that, <laughs> you know that brings up another interesting point and and the tangents are real right now how much experience can really be generated especially during the double xp window with just doing legendary raids and picking up, you know, 40,000 experience a pop and doing, you know, a day of 10 or 15 raids and how that would take the regular grinder or the non-raider so much longer to get that experience, you know, week, week and a half to get what the raider could get in one day. That's a whole nother conversation and I think that's a real interesting thing too. So Reversal put out a controversial tweet, which has since been deleted because we just tried to look for it. But he had mentioned at the end of the XP event, he said that he couldn't believe how many times he was getting tagged in tweets of people hitting level 40 during this event. And he goes, something to the effect of, casuals should not be able to hit level 40 like they're doing now. And it sent his following into like a tizzy. Yeah, everybody's panties just lit on fire (laughs) bad. Like they started freaking out. If I'm level 40, I am not a casual. Like he kind of really, really upset a lot of people. And and look, it's it's wordplay, right? Like it's 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 misconstruing context. He backpedaled and said, you know, I apologize. You know, level 40 is is a you know a massive accomplishment. But that's what we're talking about here. Like. People can grind raids and level up so much faster than the person that played, you know, for a year and a half of the game with without having raids even being in the game. So it's right. So right. that's what I think he was more, you know, getting at where people could be new to the game and just crush their XP just by doing raid after raid after raid. But very interesting. And speaking of casuals, filthy casuals, the another wave of EX raid passes went out. So next Monday, December 11th, is the date of the raid. It's going to be Mewtwo. You know, that's still the only EX raid as we know it right now. It has come out that this raid wave has targeted inexperienced and casual raiders, and in some cases, first-time raiders, which is nuts because Niantic just explained to us that they, you know, we're going to give raid pa- EX raid passes to people that have a high level in their gym badge, are continuously raiding you know all the time and have done a lot of raids this completely goes against that like i have no idea if this counts compare you know if that's what they're talking about or if this was the last time like i don't know it's so confusing that they come finally come out and give this big explanation of ex raids and how it works and then first timers and casuals are getting ex passes this week for a raid next week totally bizarre yeah i would be furious if i was like you can and someone you like someone had just started playing and they had an ex pass i'd be like i'm not gonna get furious i'm not gonna get furious you... because look Beginning. look i'm not gonna get furious because i gotta keep a cool level head mm-hmm. and be that guy that chaotic good paladin you know that's not gonna <laughs> you know lose his mind and you know start you know, killing all the little, you know, baby Jedis and stuff. No, you they, just they, hold you know, it inside and boil. That's right. Well, I'm going to well, keep see, it in. And be- <laughs> I, I re-listened to the episode that when, like, Melissa caught her Mewtwo and I was like, oh, she was really poking Ken, you know, saying that, you know, oh, do you have a Mewtwo? Do you have a Mewtwo? Oh, yeah. And so right when I heard that, I was like, I'm going to text him and ask him if he got a Mewtwo yet. <laughs> That's why I texted you. No, <laughs> said, Melissa has been good. She has been good, and she's left me alone about it. You know why? 
It's because every time she would bring Mewtwo out in a raid, he would get owned. Only and- <laughs> I've only brought him out one time, and it was against. It was against Ho Ho, oh, and he got yeah, wrecked. He got no, you destroyed. brought him out a couple times. Other other raids too. Yeah, there were sweet that no, you had. No, it was. I've only used him no, twice. No, you've once. I don't know. Every time you brought him out, I remember him going out quick. No, I it was sweet coon and he wasn't it wasn't that quick. But I just powered him up. I just dropped forty rare candy into him, so forty rare candy? Yes, sir. I have like one. Well she was I hoarded she, them. She had to clear space because I hoarded them. Her box was full. Yeah, I, I told her I, I told her to and then she gave Snorlax rare candy. I was like, Are you really I, that lazy you're gonna not give it to you to to Mewtwo? Uh, man, when I walked out long with Freaking oh, she got her Ampharos. She finally walked her Mareep yes. and then got a uh, hatched a Mareep. Yeah. So she's been walking that Mareep for like 180 like kilometers. Six months. <laughs> like, no joke. I've been walking this stupid Mareep. I could not yeah. wait to get rid of him. Now I got Chansey in there because I still don't have a Blissey. Yeah, so, yes. Go for that Chansey. Yeah, so Melissa, I've walked so many kilometers with my Chansey. She, she got her <laughs> I've Tyranitar. I've got 35 candies right she now. She got her Tyranitar. She, she threw a couple rare candy into her Pupitar to get a Tyranitar for the mm-hmm. Mewtwo raid. So she got the Tyranitar. She got Ampharos, mm-hmm. and now she needs Blissey, right? And mm-hmm. you need Porygon, Porygon too. too. Blissey and Porygon too. I so. have my upgrade. I just need the candy. And we haven't seen any Porygon raids around, so we haven't done that. But, man, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. I wish we had more raid talk to, to talk about besides our, our terrible letdown today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, you have the game open? I just heard it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to I wanted to find out what Ampharos sounded like real quick. <laughs> oh, and it's and it's little red dots glow yep. yellow when you click it. That's awesome. Well, everyone in the Mareep line, when you do their cry, their either their tail or their, you know, little little light bulbs go up, go off. Ampharos cool. isn't oh, even the best awesome. evolution. I think Flaffy is the, is the cuter best. one. Yeah. And so I've walked with Chansey 119.4 kilometers. <laughs> I, I don't think, have my phone on me. So I, I think I see. did my, my Larvitar. I think I walked like 180 or something cuckoo. Uh, yeah, no. Something crazy. I think I got all turn. my candies. From... Listen, community, what's the longest that you've walked any of your Pokemon? That's a good question. Tag us in photos. Yeah, tag if you still have photos. screenshots, yeah. Let us know. I've actually saved everyone I've walked with. I label them uh, Bud. I put Bud. like So if it's a Bud Charmander or a Bud Larvitar, I'll, I'll do that so I can search on Bud and bring up everyone I've walked with to, to see exactly how far I've walked with them. Oh, you're so smart. Yeah. You're so organized. Yeah. You're poking so me in. I'm so organized. <laughs> wow. But, um, that's that's a level of... Uh... Well, and I always save them because then I have I have a closer bond with them because I've walked with them for so long. So I want to be friends. The love just grows. I want to be friends. Um, Can we pet our Pokemon Niantic? I just want to be able to pet them. They need to bring Pokemon Refresh into Pokemon Go. Then you can pet your Pokemon. We were, we were talking we were about this talking the about other day, that. that how they could do some, uh, they need to add some new things into the game. Like I was saying, when are they going to bring Poke Centers in? And they really could do it without it being a major thing. Just turn some of the Pokestops into Poke Centers where you have to like, stop there and sit there for a certain amount of time and do like a Pokemon refresh, but get all your guys revived that are dead. Like if you don't have revive potions or max, max revives. All right. Uh, Counterpoint, yeah. counterpoint, right? I love when the internet and you, Melissa, I love you. You know that, right? <laughs> I love it when people say it wouldn't be a big deal. It's it not. would just be like they would like they one programmer would just it. flip a switch yeah. and it's like, boom, poker centers are implemented. Look, you know what I mean? <laughs> we have no idea how difficult it would be to implement any of this stuff. So we, there's of the billion ideas that we all have. It's got to be hard to implement them all. Now look at the go plus, right? This is an interesting topic. So, so, we were in this tweet chain between uh, Terry Wolf, friend of the show, and actually Meta Podcast, which is I think the most brilliant name for a Pokemon Go podcast. New podcast called the Meta Podcast. Uh, check them out because they're they're funny people and they're they're dedicated. And the dude's level forty. He did like three hundred and fifty legendary raids. It's hardcore. What? Um, yeah, it's yeah. sick. He used Harden. He, 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 he had his defense. He had, he had, he had maximum <laughs> hardness. He had maximum hardness. Maximum hardness. <laughs> but um, we were all in this one thread, and we were talking about Go Plus, and and Terry Wolf was kind of campaigning on Twitter for a while, like Niantic, dude, you got to you know do something, you know, where you're you're killing us here with the Go Plus. And then we were in this 
I think it was even in a private message converse, conversation. So we had the conversation offline and we were kind of all talking. It was like, I think uh, the Pokemon Go podcast, Pokemon Go radio was in there. Magby radio was in there. So it was like a bunch of Pokemon Go podcasts all in this one thread or this in this one private message uh, chat. And that's when I was like, yo, we need to do a unified hashtag to kind of promote this on Twitter. So I was like, hashtag fix Go Plus, right? So it was pretty cool. It took off pretty quick. I've seen a lot of tweets with it lately. Um, I know we're all been, we've all been posting with it. I put up an Instagram post uh, with my Go Plus on it. That's, you know, the I, I have on launch day of the Go Plus, I think I've told this story before. It was the, the launch of NBA 2K16 or two, whatever it was. <laughs> and they had a midnight launch at GameStop, which was also the next day that Go Plus was coming out. <laughs> so I went at midnight for the NBA 2K launch and just went in there and I bought three Go Pluses for each of us <laughs> here at the house. So I've had mine since launch day, and this thing is, like, tattered. It's went through the laundry twice. Like, the thing works. The hardware has not failed. And it's a real bummer that the software behind the game, especially with iOS 11, which I'm using, pretty much makes the thing perform at, like, 25%. Like, it's just it's just a, a really crappy experience, and it's a bummer because it slowed my production down significantly in the game because I relied on it so heavy to restock and do all this other stuff. So... We had this unified campaign with hashtag FixGoPlus. So everyone out there, this is what I recommend. Use this hashtag. Tell the stories of how how your gameplay has been affected by the GoPlus issues. Now, if you have Android, let us know also because, we, you know, the iOS 11 issues with GoPlus are known. You know, it's the lag, the delay. But Android players are suffering as well. Connectivity issues. Melissa is a perfect example. So Android users too, you know, use this hashtag, but in using this hashtag, you know, use it responsibly because I've seen a couple posts out there that were kind of nasty and super negative and just ripping into Niantic, you know, about this. And I understand you're upset and I understand that, you know, we have a lot of passion behind this and we want this thing to work and we all paid out our hard earned money for this thing. You know, it's a free game. Yeah. But we paid our, our, you know, hard earned money to get, you know, 35 bucks for a go plus at the store. Use it positively. Use it constructively. So it, it, tell a story. Say, look, this is how I play the game, and this is how it's been affecting me. You know, what's going on with the solution? Because on the known issues report, this thing has just kind of been stale. It's just been sitting there, you know, that this thing is going gonna, is gonna to get fixed, or they're looking into the reasons of why this thing needs to get fixed. I think the time has come that we really put our foot down and, you know, proactively, constructively, and positively explain ourselves and say, look, we need, we need answers. We need to know what's going on. You can't just say that you're looking into the issues on your, you know, known issues page. That's not enough. We need some more information. You guys are having better communication with the community. We need communication on this issue. Fix Go Plus. Use the hashtag. Where does Bond? I need my Go Plus back. I, yeah. Uh, uh, no, so yeah, don't do yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah, don't no. do that. No, I mean, no, I put no, out a, uh, a tweet myself and, you know, just saying that, like, you know, I love this game. I love my Go Plus. And ever since I updated to iOS 11, it's really like hurt my gameplay, you know, and it's yeah. just with the hashtag fix go plus, like, you know, just some small positive story and just roll with it. Yeah. And it really has uh, slowed my progression in the game down because I would run through, you know, 100 Pokeballs a day with the go plus. And that's um, now that I'm not using it. I'm No, I'm, no, he's he's right. Yeah. It, right there with you. I might only catch. 20 Pokemon out of that 100, you know, because the thing never catches. <laughs> but that that was a, a main part of my game, and especially with, with spinning stops, that was that's the key. And with this event that just passed, it was a really big bummer not yeah. being able to use it, especially with, yeah. for us, when we have a place like Red Bank where there's tons of spawns and tons of Pokestops, like, all right there, and you can't double team. You can't. I couldn't double team it. Well, I had to choose one or the double other. Double dip. Yeah, yeah double dipping double is the dip. best where you're 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 catching, <laughs> right? You're spinning with the phone and catching and catching with the Go, Go Plus. Plus. Yeah. And you can you can maximize it cuz even when you're in a Pokestop screen, you can still get notified and catch a Pokémon with the Plus, mm -hmm. but not the other way around. So, yeah, use that hashtag, tell your stories, uh keep it positive, keep it, you know, keep it constructive. And, you know, hopefully our voice will be heard and we'll at least get some communication and they'll respond to one of us and say, look, this is where we're at with our, uh, we hear ya. We hear ya. You we're know, that's, the, that's, that's the first, that's the first step. That's the main goal is just to, 
just to get a We Hear You. Busy week. Yeah. Adam, you got anything else, man, or is that a show? I think that's a show. That's a show. As far as Pokemon goes, I mean, I'm just waiting on Deli Bird. (laughs) Oh, Dude, you're gonna you're gonna like die when on that sword. Out. It's like this is like a deli really bird shaped, shaped samurai sword, like face <laughs> up right now in his room. He's like, I'm dying on this sword. I'm just waiting for deli bird. I'm slowly inching my belly into this sword. You know, like I oh. mean, if if like it, it's like a Christmas, like f- drops on the 24th or the 25th, like I'd be so happy. Oh, I, I would, would cry cool. for you. No gifts needed. <laughs> just would, Deli Bird. I would cry for you. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be awesome. So the next time we record, a week from today, let's 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 place let's place some some friendly wagers. What's oh, going to be what What do you think is going to be different in the game, Adam? You think anything's going to happen before next week? Well, what's next week? What's the date? Okay, so we next got the twelfth coming. The 12th. Oh, oh, like oh, the yeah. The month, yeah. So, so I think I think the fifteenth Friday they'll give us that 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 rundown time where like people are like, okay, Ho has gone. Like, what's next? And we're gonna find out Friday, the fifteenth, Gen three, but it'll probably be an event of some sort for, you know, a certain type winter event. So ice ice types. Ice and water, ice, or something ice like that. Gen three types, and a, a, a Gen type 3. rollout. Mm. 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 That's my you, bet. What about That's you? My what bet. do you think? Oh God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care what they do. Just give us something <laughs> new. It's <laughs> <laughs> two bombs in one pocket. I'm sorry. No, and you know, I don't think anything is going to happen by next week. But I am, I think I am with Adam, where by that Friday, or Thursday they usually make, they they make notes and stuff too. And that's the day that iOS updates will hit. But ho goes away Tuesday. I think that Thursday or Friday, that's the 14th and 15th, they're going to make some kind of announcement. I think Gen 3 is just going to show up and be, the. it's all going to be here. I mean, with the exception of the... The legendaries and, you know, I'm sure a couple of weird things like uh, Shedinja or whatever. But I think the Gen 3 is going to actually be here in force, in full, over the next two weeks. But nothing nothing till the next time we record. But shortly after that, I think uh, I think Gen 3 will be here by by Lured Up Episode 12. We'll be talking about the release of Gen 3. Watch, Mark like, my what? word. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow they're going to drop, drop three. everything. I'm going gonna, gonna to have to record a little bumper in the beginning of the episode again and be like, yo, yesterday we recorded, today Gen 3 launched, so here we are. But <laughs> no, I, I, it's going to be exciting to see what happens, and uh, they got to keep this momentum going because th- it's th- been fun. It's been fun. Yeah, it's, it's been, been fun. fun. But that's going to be a show, so we want to hear from you. Please email us, luredup at gmail.com. Check out everything the show does over at gotawatchemall.com. We would appreciate your feedback. Appreciate your support on social media. Gently press the like, follow, and subscribe button wherever you are. Email us, like I said. Leave us a review in iTunes. That would help also. You could do that right from iOS 11, directly from our page. Just search for our podcast. Even if you're already subscribed, search for our podcast. And from the main page, scroll all the way to the bottom. You can leave a review right there. And uh, that's about it. You can find me personally on Twitter at ProudGamerTweet. Adam, where can they find you? You can find me at well, on Twitter at... Deli Bird fan. Oh, just kidding. Um, Phoenix back for fire. <laughs> and Melissa is still only has one tweet over at Super Sweet Miss. Super Sweet Miss. <laughs> That's right. And she's still dominating us in uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. She's she's still like three or four trials ahead of us. So hang. we can't we can't hang with her. I am but... slow and steady, man. Yeah. <laughs> my start my starters uh, almost maxed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's gonna be a show for Pokemon Go. Thanks so much, trainers. Oh, I like that. Thanks, trainers. <laughs> train on. Train on, trainers. Train on. Get your. Do you even train, bro? <laughs> I go to the gym do you every even day. Catch Pokemon, bro. I'm going to the train station. Oh, you guys like Pokemon? <laughs> this is Lord Up, episode ten, and you're on Day Street number ten. Yeah, the, the train <laughs> station. That's awesome. All right, everyone. Do thanks do so do much. <laughs> Cue the music. We'll see everyone next week. Bye. (laughs) Peace. All right. Have a good day, night, long afternoon. Um, Deli Bird. I'm shining good morning. Deli Bird.